Hi, I'm Matthew Joby. This is Media Psychology. So we're going to begin investigating this emerging field of media psychology. It's a very uh, new field that's coming into an existence, uh, although, as we'll find out in the history of, of, of media psychology, that the, the earliest uh, psychologists, in this, certainly the Gestalt psychologists of the 19th century, early 20th century, were very interested in our relationship to film and other forms of media, the environment, architecture, etc. But for our, our introduction in this first lecture, we're going to take a, a rather specific, maybe even a little bit of a narrow look at media psychology. And uh, as the lectures unfold, as we investigate this further, we will uh, come to understand more broadly uh, defined ideas of media psychology and how media psychology is done. So let's begin by taking a look at the word media. Etymology of the word media is the Latin medium, which is singular form, media is plural form, and this is anything that exists in the middle. So we can think of media as a medium, a thing that exists in the middle. In the middle of what? In the middle of two people, in the middle of two groups of people, in the middle of a, between in the middle of an individual and a group, or a group and an individual. This is media psychology. We can already see that in this sense, we're going to have some close relationships with social psychology, the, how the individual influences the group and how the group influences the individual. Etymology of the word psychology, psyche and logos, or suko logos, is from the Greek psyche, the, the soul, the mind, the spirit, and logos is, uh, is, logos is either imagery or acoustic image or acoustic representation uh, of something. So logos is usually described as the study of or the talk of something. A logos, logos is actually a symbolic representation of some idea. So taken together we have psyche. psychology, the study of or symbolization of the soul. Uh, we know that as we'll explore in the sixth after the 1600s, in the Enlightenment, the Scientific Revolution, the word psyche uh, took on the, uh, the meaning of mind, whereas today psychology would be studied, is the scientific study of behavior and mental processes, the mind. Taken together, we have media psychology. So, what are the characteristics of media psychology? Well, the the uh, most salient characteristic, I would say, is that it's an interdisciplinary study. This is not always the case in psychology, uh, but interdisciplinary in the case in, in, the, in the sense that it really encompasses uh, fields such as economics and political science, advertising and art, philosophy, uh, a field called media studies, sociology, psychology and neuroscience, literary theory, critical theory, film theory, and we even get into television, internet, radio, art, print media, digital media, sound recording, technology, and communications theory. This is a very broad area of the study. There's a variety of research methods that are used not only within media psychology, but also the research methods that are uh, accepted from the other disciplines. This is not an exclusionary uh, area of study in psychology where we only accept an experiment or uh, things of this nature. This is a very interdisciplinary endeavor, uh, possibly, potentially, a model for the rest of psychology. So um, as this also spans the many different schools of thought of psychology, uh, meaning the, the seven schools of thought, seven major schools of thought, which we'll be investigating shortly. All of this is taken together to understand uh, how media influences us and how we influence media uh, through the different schools of thought within psychology. It spans the areas of study in psychology from human development to uh, interpersonal communications to uh, learning theory and, and how we think uh, to personality development and even into mental illness and psychopathology, all the different areas of, of psychology are, are involved in media. 
and it also includes applied, so practical media uh, theory, and also theoretical academic research. So in other words, using the, the findings in a practical way to maybe inform consumers to help people to become better citizens, uh, better consumers of the media, uh, and just a little more aware of the power of the media. So what do media psychologists do? Well, media psychologists can work in private industry, can work as academics, can work in non-governmental organizations, uh, MPOs, NGOs, can work to inform individuals how different forms of media influence individuals and masses, how to best influence individuals and masses. It can be used uh, to uh, do research and applications dealing with all forms of media technology, how to use traditional and mass media and radio, television, film, uh, video, print, magazines, music, art, and uh, new emerging technologies on smartphones and the internet. It's really a wide open area of study that can augment uh, other professional pursuits as well within communications. So let's take a look at the major schools of thought within psychology, which media psychology spans across. And uh, we'll describe each one a little bit briefly, and we'll be going into detail on each of these throughout this course. So biological neuroscience, or biopsych, this is an area of psychology that's interested primarily in the three messenger systems of the body. That is the endocrine system, the nervous system, and genetics genetics being messenger systems between generation to generation, uh, endocrine and nervous system being messenger system within the individual. Uh, biological psychologists are typically uh, have two traits that are, that are typical of this approach, and that is mechanism and reductionism. Mechanism is the idea that, uh, if, that uh, the, the the brain, the nervous system, and the nervous system works in a, a clockwise, mechanized uh, fashion that can be have discoverable and predictable interactions. It's also materialist, uh, meaning that the, the, the basis of stuff is material. It's not uh, uh, spiritual, but material. So in other words, chemical particles and brain tissue is very material. And again, I said before, reductionistic, and that's the idea that we can understand things by reducing them down to their smallest parts. So we have these tra these traditions within biological neuroscience. Cognitive psychology is interested in things like computer, uh, artificial intelligence, and virtual reality, and how we can use these as models to understand how we think and to use uh, how we think as a model to develop uh, computer thinking. Evolutionary psychology is interested in how the individual adapts in their environment for survival and reproduction. Existential phenomenological psychology, known in the U.S. primarily as humanism, would be interested in the existential considerations or interaction with stuff, uh, how we get meaning and how we come to deal with the absurdity of existence and what existence is in itself and human relationships, and purposefulness, and uh, facing the inevitability of our mortality, and how uh, technology and media, uh, how we interact in this way, in these existential ways with media and technology. Psychodynamic psychology is primarily interested in the unconscious influences uh, on the media, and media's unconscious influences on us Coming from the uh, psychodynamic uh, tradition, we can understand the symbolic meanings of a film or of a song or, or, uh, or some sort of print media. And in behaviorism, we'll be looking at a behaviorist is interested in the, the operant conditioning and classical conditioning through media, reward and punishment schedules, what keeps us clicking on the, on the mouse and also our classical or associated learning uh, through our interactions with different media and messages. Finally, sociocultural psychology is interested in the cultural influence, the cultural implications of media, 
and how we interact socially through media. Areas of study in media psychology. There's some, some broad questions. How does the media and technology influence lifespan development? Not only cognitive development and thinking, but biological development. Do children who are raised interacting with touchpad screens have different biological, neurological uh, makeup than a child who would develop using print media or book or a magazine, storybooks, looked into, looking into enriched environment studies? Uh, how does the media affect moral development, personality development, social development, attachment theory, attachment to objects such as mobile phones and touch pads, iPads, things of this nature. These are all questions of lifespan development, womb to tomb psychology. Uh, how does the media affect our thinking? Do we think differently by using different forms of media? Does using a computer and the, the, the certain cognitive uh, maps that are, are uh, encountered in, in this sort of new technology, does this influence how we go about our daily decision making and task making? Do we learn from our technology? Do we become the technology we use? Could be a question of uh, how cognitively we are affected by the media. How does the media affect our actions, our behaviors? How does the media affect our emotions? From voting to purchasing a product to falling in love, does you know, does the romantic film, the, the romantic narrative, affect how we choose and interact in our romantic relationships? These are questions about how the media affects our actions and our emotions and our thinking. What are the biological considerations of media exposure? Again, how does being uh, exposed to different forms of uh, traditional and non-traditional media uh, affect neurological development? Meaning, relationship, purposefulness in the media, the big existential questions. How do we fall in love with, uh, with, a, a, with someone on, on a, a social network site that we've only known virtually? Print and digital media. How do we come to uh, interact and influence and become influenced by print and digital media? So in the United States, in the 1980s, we'll be looking into the history of the later lecture. The APA Division 46 has been founded, and this is the Division of Media Psychology. And the division has a few, uh, a few objectives that it describes on its website. Uh, we have the website down here at apa.org forward slash divisions forward slash div 46 forward slash. And uh, to give an idea here, the APA Division's objectives are to support research and enhance the understanding, uh, the understanding of the impact of media technologies and the effectiveness of media technology to transmit information and influence behavior, to develop a community for the discussion and development of theoretical frameworks of media psychology, to support the development and use of positive and pro-social media technologies. Uh, how can we can uh, use our understanding, perhaps, of what has been traditionally referred to as propaganda uh, in, a, in a positive way to, to, to encourage pro-social behavior, uh, support efforts to educate the public and professionals in media and technological literacy and digital citizenship, for being an informed consumer, for voting, for, for purchasing, and, and uh, all of these things, to facilitate the interaction between psychology and media representatives to encourage fair and accurate representation of the science and practice of psychology. So this is a little bit of a, a goal for psychology itself to use media to promote the field of psychology. This is a, a, an objective of the APA, Division 46, to prepare psychologists to interpret the psychological research to the lay public. So how to explain more uh, esoteric concepts in the profession to the general public to find the usefulness of this enrich and encourage the teaching and training of media psychology and to encourage adherence to the APA technical standards and guidelines in use of the media. They have liaisons with other divisions within uh, the APA. So if we take a look here at the 
Division 46 APA website, Society for Media, Psychology, and Technology. Uh, we just explore this. We see that the Division 46 gives a little brief history of itself. Here it uh, answers some of the questions that we explored a few moments ago. What is media psychology? Uh, what does media psychologists do? What does the Division 46 do? And uh, we see the advertisement for a text, the Oxford Handbook of Media Psychology. Uh, it's a Facebook page, a Twitter page. They're incorporating uh, media into their division. Um, we see their journal, The Amplifier, Fall Winter 2012. Uh, and here's an interview with media psychologist. And see incorporating media into the website itself. And we go back to the home page and uh, see here there are uh, four articles uh, on the definition of media psychology. It's interesting itself. You know, every every school of thought of psychology has a different definition of psychology. The one most commonly learned is cognitive definition, which is the scientific study of behavior and mental processes. Of course, evolutionary psychologists and psychoanalysts and humanists uh, and behaviorists would all have different uh, definition of psychology. It so happens that the one that's published in uh, most introduction to psychology textbooks today is the cognitive from the cognitive paradigm. Uh, we look here and we see a uh, page for the officers, quite a few uh, individuals who are involved with this, with this division. Information on membership. Uh, we have uh, events. Ah, this always is not such a bad thing. Honolulu, Hawaii is the convention 2013. Uh, this would be better if it would happen in December instead of July. Uh, let's see here. Newsletter. Let's see the newsletter is going back all the way to 1993. A listserv. Uh, articles and resources. Media psychology related links, articles, and books. Let's see the books. Include psychology in the media, different interdisciplinary texts, graduate programs in media psychology, even media communications is listed here, not just limited to psychology departments. Bloggers for Division 46, individuals who have blogs, awards that the division has won, and how to contact. So it's a little overview of the Division 46 website.